Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I'm a staff scientist at the Cal's Visualization Core Laboratory. So today I'm going to be continuing my uh, tutorial uh, video series on how to get started with PyTorch uh, on IBEX by showing you how to launch a, uh, a training job on IBEX. So this video kind of picks up where the previous video left off, where I covered how to uh, both how to create a con environment for PyTorch and then how to launch a Jupyter server on the debug partition of IBEX uh, uh, for PyTorch. And so now I'm going to show you how to launch a training job. And I've already created my Jupyter Lab server running uh, on the debug partition on IBEX. Uh, and so if you need a reminder on how to do that, you know, please check out our previous, uh, previous video on YouTube. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how, um, how to launch a PyTorch training job on IBEX. First, I'm going to do it from within the Jupyter Lab server. And then I'm going to shut down the Jupyter Lab server and show you how to launch the same job kind of from the command. So the Jupyter Lab server is going to be just a nice environment for me to kind of show you the, the, different, uh, the different components of the job launch process. So we'll start with our training script itself. So in the source directory, I have included a train.py script. And I don't want to go into too many details about this script. I'll save those for future videos, which are going to talk about uh, more advanced tips and tricks on how to optimize your PyTorch jobs uh, for IBEX. But I just want to mention a few high level things. So the first is that I've extracted most all of the important um, uh, parameters of the model as global variables at the top of my script. So this is just a good practice for machine learning and deep learning in general. It's not necessarily PyTorch specific, but I just want to note it here. So um, the next thing I'm doing is creating uh, data sets and data loaders. So this is PyTorch specific. So in this script, I'm going to be um, using the CIFAR 10 data set. And I'm downloading the CIFAR 10 data set using the data sets package from Torch Vision, which we installed in our Conda environment. So the first time we run this script, we're going to download the CIFAR 10 data set from, uh, from its website, which is here. And we're going to store this in the data directory of our project. Then subsequent runs of the script will use this uh, pre-existing data um, that will be stored on the file system when running training jobs on IBEX. OK. Um, note the data loaders. So the data loaders are a, a topic that I will do a, a tutorial video on uh, in the future. Here I have set things like batch size, the number of workers for your data loader um, to be, um, you know, the batch size is large enough fill, to fill the memory on, of the GPU card. The data loader number of workers is set equal to the number of CPUs that I've requested from Slurm. I make those workers persistent. I pin the memory, and I use the default prefetch prefetch factor of two. So I'll go into more details again in a future video about why you should why you should set these things in the way that I've, uh, I've set them in the script. For now, I just want you to take it as, as given. Um, then we define our ResNet 50 model. So I'm going to be training ResNet 50 to, uh, on the CIFAR 10 data set. Um, we define the standard loss function and uh, just pick an optimizer. We have the training loop here making use of the tucked in library to create a nice progress bar that we'll use when we do interactive work, but that will disable when we launch our, our batch job. And then we save our model, and then we have our inference step. So here we uh, use the train model to make predictions on the test set. We store all of those predictions, move them from the GPU back to the CPU, and then we use this handy function from uh, the PyTor or the scikit-learn metrics package uh, called classification report to just do a classification report to print some measure of how well our, our classifier is doing. Okay, so that's a quick run through the training script that we're going to be using in this in this tutorial. So um, note here that I'm setting the number of training epochs to be two. So we're just going to do kind of a short training job uh, just to uh, test that this works. So always a good practice to uh, 
test that your training script is actually working for maybe one or two epics um, before you try to ask for a large amount of resources and or run a training job that's going to run for uh, for many, many hours. Okay, so let's navigate back to our project source directory and then we go to our launcher. And from our launcher, we're going to open a terminal window. And now I'm going to interactively launch the, the training script. So I need to uh, see where I am. So I'm in the project's root directory here. But our content environment is not active yet. It's still the base content environment. So we need to activate our project's content environment, which lives in the env directory. And once that is active, we can use our Python. So the Python is just double checking that the Python that we'll be using is actually in the env slash bin directory of our project's content environment. So now we will use Python to run the source train.py script. Now, the first time that this training script runs, it's going to have to download the, the data file. Um, and again, so our data directory is set to be data. And when we get to here in the script, we'll need to download that data. So sometimes I have noticed that it does take um, a little bit of time to get a, uh, a connection to download the data for this data set. I'm not quite sure why. But for the moment, I'm just going to pause this uh, video and then wait until the, the download process is nearly complete, and then we will uh, pick up again. OK, so we finally made the connection. It took about a minute for, for whatever reason to actually make the connection, but the, the, down, the download took place in about 12 seconds. So it went very quickly. OK. And so now our training has actually started. So here we have the uh, this progress bar. So this is the the, the progress bar that's generated by the TalkDem library. Um, so that is this bit here. So this is the uh, this is where I create the um, the uh, progress bar that's printing out now. And you can see I'm processing, or the training is processing about you know one or a third batches per second. And our data set, our training data set has something like 50,000 training images. So we need about 196 batches to go through an entire epoch of training data. And you'll see that that's because the, uh, the batch size is, is, is quite large. So typically, You've, you'll see uh, train batches of you know, 32 or smaller. And this training batch size has been set at 256 because with full, um, um, that's the largest batch size that we can accommodate on the 32 gig V100 card. So I'm using the full memory capacity of our V100 GPU. And I think that's an important practice to, to try to follow. Um, in my experience, the batch size of 32 um, was often, often seemed to be chosen not as some particularly magic number, but be, that's the amount of batches that could be accommodated on a 16 gig GPU, which are the most commonly sized GPU cards that you will encounter on um, public cloud infrastructure like Amazon or Google or, or Microsoft. So I would encourage you to play around with your batch size to make sure that you are filling up the memory on your 
on the on the GPU when you're doing your training on IBEX. Okay, so there's our first epic done. So this is the uh, the second epic, and this is the last epic that we'll be running here. Um, so while this last epic is finishing up, I want to um, start talking about the training scripts that we'll use to launch batch jobs on IBEX. So if you look in the bin directory, you'll see that there is a uh, train.sbatch file. So let's look at this. So this is what um, what you may have heard referred to as a Slurm job script. So if you've come to the IBEX 101 training offered by my colleagues at KSL, then you will have seen many examples of, of Slurm job scripts. So in this train.sbatch script, this is where we will actually request our, um, our resources from Slurm. So in particular, we're going to ask for uh, just two hours of time, uh, a single node, one V100 per node, six CPUs per GPU, and 64 gigs of CPU memory. Constraint equals Intel. So again, we've optimized our content environment um, to target Intel CPUs. So we want to make sure that we always end up on an Intel node. Now, initially, we're just going to launch this uh, for the purpose of this, this video. I'm going to launch this on the debug partition. And that will just make the job start fairly quickly because there's usually not a lot of activity on the debug partition. Um, if you wanted to ask for you know, a longer amount of time for your training job, um, then you would need to launch that job on the, on the batch partition. But even launching batch jobs on the debug partition is a good practice just to test that your that your training and job launch workflow is is working properly before you ask for a larger amount of resources. Um, our output and error files are going to be redirected into the results directory into a directory. This percent %x is a Slurm variable that stores the um, Slurm job name. And so the Slurm job name that we define um, in a minute will be used to create a directory of the same name. And then the Slurm job ID will be appended or prepended rather uh, to denote the different Slurm.out and Slurm.error files for different job IDs with the same job name. So I'll, I'll show you all of that in a minute once we launch the script. Now, um, this is important to set in all of your uh, your Slurm job scripts. The set dash e makes sure that your job script fails. Your whole job will fail if any step in your training uh, script fails. So what I found with at least machine learning and deep learning training, that this is typically what you want. So if your script fails, you want the whole thing to fail. Um, uh, or if any any command in your script fails, then it probably means that the rest of the commands after that aren't going to work as intended, and so you should just stop the whole job. And that's what the set dash e accomplishes. Next, we need to activate the, the conda environment. And then we launch our training script. So a couple of things to note. So when we launch the training script, we have this dollar sign one in quotes, this special variable. This is a bash variable. So if you came along to the introduction to shell for data scientist training that, um, that I give here with KVL, uh, you will recognize this variable. So this dollar sign one is a placeholder for the first command line argument passed into the script. So it's a way to pass um, variables into a shell script. And that's what we're going to use to actually define the training script that we want to run. So we can make our job script, this train.sbat script, reusable for different, uh, different training scripts. Um, and the last thing I want to point out is that to get the conda activate command to work in your JavaScript, you need to include um, the bin bash login instead of just the standard bin bash so that this JavaScript runs in a bash shell, but in a bash login shell. So that's what enables the conda activate command to work properly. You want to avoid using the source activate command to launch your 
uh, or to activate your content environments as that approach to activating content environments may likely be deprecated in future versions of content. Okay, so this is our train.sbatch script. Now, the next thing we need to do is to look at the launch train.shell script. So I like to, um, for my training jobs, I like to create a wrapper shell script that I actually execute in order to launch the training job. And that's because typically with, um, with training jobs, there's some additional kind of set up steps um, or job management steps that you will want to do before you launch the, before you type S batch and then the script that you want to launch. And so here I encapsulate all of that logic in a, in a shell script. So this shell script can be launched as your regular bin bash. And then what we want to do is we want to, again, make sure that our, if our launch script fails, we don't even want to bother launching our, our job. Um, then the next thing we want to do is um, set up a variable called project directory, um, which just it's kind of being very explicit about where we should be running this, uh, uh, running this uh, script. And then we're going to create a separate directory for each job. So this is where I change, I set my job names. So in this case, it's just going to be example training job. And then I'm going to create a directory inside the results directory with that particular job name. And now I can launch the training job by calling sbatch, passing in the, the job name. And then this is the script that I want to run. And then this is the actual Python training script that I want to pass into the training.sbat script, which will then pass it directly here into the Python uh, in the Python program. So that's how we will be able to reuse the same train.sbat script for many different training jobs. So this try to make this train.sbat script quite general and, um, and reusable for different training jobs. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at our output. So the, the interactive training job finished as expected. Um, performance is not great. You know, we trained for two epochs and we got a classifier that is, you know, on average across all of the, uh, the different, um, different classes about, you know, 31% accurate. Um, so that's not terribly great. Um, it's better than random, but, you know, still clearly a lot more training is needed. Okay. So let's go ahead now. And so now we've seen kind of interactively that our script is working. So let us launch our, um, our batch job. So here we're at the command line and we can uh, deactivate our Conda environment. And so now we're ready to launch our, our job uh, on, as a batch job. So if you just look at the jobs that are running for our users. So we can see, so this is our interactive job that we're running now, so our Jupyter server, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to execute the launch train script. And so now we've submitted a new job. And we can see that that job is already running. Again, because there is hardly anyone at present using the, the debug queue or the debug partition rather. And so this job uh, launched immediately. So now if we go over to our uh, project directory and we go into results, we can see here's this example training job. And here are the slurm.error and slurm.out files for job 14741833. Now this model here, you note know that it says seven minutes ago. So this is actually the model checkpoint that was generated when we ran the script interactively. 
And in a moment, that model checkpoint will be overwritten by the model checkpoint that we just uh, that will be created from the batch job that we just launched. Now we know that the batch job is going to take about um, well, it takes about two and a half minutes per epoch, and we're only training for two epochs, so this is going to take about five minutes uh, to run. Um, So at this point, I will just pause the video and then I will uh, pick up again once the, the script has finished running. Okay, so I noticed that our model checkpoint has updated. So that means that we must be uh, pretty close to having our job finished. So let's just check and see what is going on in the queue. So in fact, yes, our job has, has now completed. And if we go and look at the uh, slurm dot out. We'll see. So here is our um, here is the output of our uh, uh, of our batch job. And you can see we get exactly the same answer as expected that we got when we did the um, uh, the job when we launched the job interactively. Cool. Okay. So in there. So now I've walked you through the process of launching um, launching a batch job. Um, from within an interactive session uh, on IBEX. So just to recap, so there are there are three three scripts. So those are your train.py script or your your model that you actually want to train. So then we have the uh, train.sbat script. So this is the script where you will set your kind of um, uh, your resource request via Slurm uh, here in the headers. You'll activate your conduit environment, and then you will launch your training script and do any other else any other things that you need to do as part of your actual job. Then you have a launch train shell script where you do any kind of like project bookkeeping that you need, um, and or anything else that you need to do that is part of this job before you actually call sbatch. So if you find yourself doing a lot of stuff at the command line before you then call sbatch. Then you can put all that logic here, and so you keep it in one place, um, and so you can quickly and efficiently repeat it. Okay. Um, I have added so much of the important stuff of what I have said in this, in this video. I've tried to include in the README file of the bin directory. Um, so if you scroll down, you'll see that. I've added a section here about launching a training job via Slurm. And this kind of tries to explain the most important parts about uh, launching the training script. So you'll have that as well as a, as a written record. OK, so the last thing I want to show you is how to do this from uh, just from the command line from like within a terminal after you've logged into IBAC. So this, the starting the JupyterLab server is not, a, is not a necessity in order to launch jobs on IBEX. It was just for pedagogy purposes of this video, um, I found it useful. So I'm actually just going to close all these files. And then I'm going to shut down the Jupyter server. And this is going to shut down the, the, the job running on the uh, debug partition. So the server stopped. We close this. And now we go back to our terminal. And if we do, if we look in the queue, see what is going on for the user, you'll see that there's no jobs running. So that shutting down that uh, Jupyter server stopped the job that was running. Um, we're still in our project root directory. And in the bin directory, we have, um, we have our, our launch train shell script. So if we wanted to launch a bash job from the command line, then all we need to do is execute this shell script. And now we have submitted that job. And if we look in the queue, we'll see that that job has started. And in about five minutes time, that job will end. OK, so there we go. So I've covered kind of two approaches to 
uh, launching uh, I, uh, PyTorch training jobs on Ibex and kind of walk you through my best practices. Now, here we've been debugging, we've been asking for relatively small amounts of, of resources, but we don't actually know how well our job is performing in the sense of like, is it even using much of the GPU at all? Um, is it using CPUs? Is it using memory? Like, are we, are we making as efficient use of the resources as we could be doing? This is a very important question. And so in the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how to add support for this JupyterLab NV dashboard tool that is already installed in our Conda environment. And I'm going to show you how to uh, create a GPU utilization dashboards that you can look at within JupyterLab so that when you're debugging and working interactively, you can see the performance of your job on GPU, CPU, and memory utilization. And then I'm going to show you how that you can add a uh, NV dashboard server to your actual job script so that when you launch batch jobs on IBEX, you will be able to get the same uh, dashboards for how well your job is doing. So that even when you're running larger jobs with more resources, you can still be certain that your job is making good use of GPU uh, compute and memory and CPU compute and memory. So that video will uh, come out shortly and I highly recommend it. So as usual, feedback is very appreciated. Uh, it helps us decide kind of what kind of videos to make and what content is useful for you. So if you wanna let us know, either via email or on Slack or via the comment section, what, what kind of, of uh, videos would be useful for you to get you um, better equipped to do your machine learning, your deep learning on IBEX, please let us know. And um, thanks for watching. Bye for now.